Hello and welcome to Gorilla and the Geek, the podcast for sweaty nerds by sweaty nerds. My name is Kyle from Geeks Weekly, and as always, I'm joined by my friend, John, the Ginger Gorilla. John, we're back to back on this week. Yes, sir. Feels good, man. I'm uh, very excited to get into this, and it, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I just got to say, re-watching Jersey Shore, so obviously, um, if you're watching this video, hopefully you watched last week's. Um, we're going to be talking about Jersey Shore season two this week. Um, Miami baby. Um, and rewatching Jersey Shore has been so much fun and it's amazing rewatching it at a different point in my life because you just see everything so differently. Um, being, being the age that they kind of are like now in my life, I'm just like, thank God I'm not those people. I think yeah. that's really what pointed out. I mean, maybe now I wish I kind of had, you know, some of their money. Some of them are doing well. Um, but just, man, they had yeah. fun, but they. So, so the Miami season, it's my personal favorite season of the show. And it's one where the party lifestyle is kind of fully brought to the table for the first time in the show's history. In season one, you, you see them partying at like kind of half empty clubs a lot. Um, you can tell the women are kind of just going along with stuff because like there's cameras around, but now there's starting to be a little bit of stardom there and the clubs are going to are packed. They're heading out to clubs. You mentioned to me yesterday at like 1.00 AM coming home at like four to 5.00 AM, which yeah. you and I have never done. It's crazy. Um, and it, this season, I think, is even crazier because of where they are. They're in Miami. Yeah. It's a party city. Um, Seaside is a party town in the sense of, like, a weekend party town. Yeah. Um, during the summer, during the week, the bars aren't packed. Like No, because people are still working. Um, yeah. Where Miami, I think you could go to a bar on a Tuesday night. You There's bars and clubs in Miami Tuesday nights. That are probably b -b 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 bumping. Yeah, you know? big time. Big time. And um, that was kind of jarring to me, <laughs> seeing, <laughs> hearing them going, oh, man, it's 5 a.m. Or, or, or that one episode, and I'm sure we'll get into it a little later, where 6 o'clock in the morning, they're trying to call girls to come over to the crib. It's like, what What kind of world the sun's out again. In? Yeah, exactly. The sun's out again. What do you – stop. Be asleep. Be, be, a, be a functioning human being. And – um. And this, of course, is also the uh, the first real Ron and Sam season. Yeah. You get a little taste now... of fights in season one. But this season, they come into it broken up. And it's now at the point where it's starting to affect everyone in the house. Yeah. Angelina comes back. Vinny's starting to come out and party a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I think this is where a lot of the dynamics for the future of the show really start to come forth in this season. Yeah. And um, why don't we just jump right into... Let's do it. Let's see. How, where do you want to start with this one? Um, Let's just start with the Ron and Sam relationship. All right, we'll, we'll do the Ron and Sam. Right, and I Sam think that's the basis of a lot of other things that come in this season. Okay, and then I have a feeling we can get to one of the categories throughout this conversation. Yes. Um. Uh, so, so Ronnie and Sam, they come in both single. Yeah. But they dated right after the first season for a little while. Yeah. They tried uh, to continue the relationship, but then they ended up and they say the first episode, they mutually decide it, but it doesn't seem like that. They broke up on TV. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Uh, during one of the reunion episodes, but they come into the house. It's very clear that they're not over each other and that they are not uh, okay with seeing one another. Really? They get into a fight the first night. Ron calls Sam the C-word. And Sam and the girls leave the club crying. Uh, and then Ronnie proceeds to go supernova in a way that I didn't realize was unreplicable when I was a kid. You're a teenager, you see this stuff, and you're like, is that what partying's actually like? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. That's not real life. That is <laughs> like this... this lightning in a bottle moment uh on tv 
Yeah. Where the partying lifestyle, it, like, peaks. This guy's making out with two girls at once. He's somehow, like, obliterated, but not aggressive. He's... It was, like, the perfect night out for him, I guess. Um, he's exercising his demons. And then he comes home. And he goes, well, how about I go get into bed with my girl? How about that? And everything changes. Yeah. That is a moment that... I think him deciding to do that that night changes the course of the show forever. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Because, um, and we'll talk about the note a little bit later, but uh, the guys immediately now have to go, okay, we're picking Ronnie's side. You have to. Because you now know. Angelina's out with them. She sees everything happen. Now she knows about Ron Dog and Sam out, and yeah. she has to keep it quiet. Now here's what I'm asking you, John. Mm-hmm. You're one of the guys in the house. That happens. What do you do? I don't know. Um, it's one of those situations you have to just kind of think, who am I better friends with in this house? Because, look, just because they are all on the show together doesn't mean they have to be friends. No. Um, and with that said, the guys don't need to be friends with Sam. Like, it's not – especially – I feel like she's the one who's – who is always a little, ex- except for Angelina, a little separated from yeah. being friends with people in the house. Um, maybe that's because of the Ron relationship. Who knows? I think so. But I think that played into it a lot. Um, and I, you, I'd have to go with I'm I'm dudes with the dude, right? Like it might yeah. be scummy for me not to say anything, but. I don't know. I feel like I would just have to go with him. I feel like I would say something to him though. Like, yeah, I you're being, so you're being a dick. Cause like, I think that's a part of a good friend is calling your friend out on horrible flaws like that. Yeah. It, it's, it's a tough situation because I, for me, I, I'm in my now adult age. Yeah. I try to stay as far away from people's business as possible, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to their relationships. Cause those can be complicated. And this one is the definition of complicated. Uh, but in that scenario, I would tell him, Hey, look, you can do this now, but she's going to see this on television in two months. Yeah. Don't, don't forget that this is being televised and she has a TV at home. Uh, so this is going to turn out really bad for you. Even if I just framed it in a way that like, it's going to wind up being bad if he continues to do it. See, I'd say something to him. I wouldn't say anything to her. Um, if I was one of the girls, I would have said something to her though. Mm, yeah like I'll, I'll be honest i would have said something like angelina not saying anything is kind of uh, wild angelina is a tough one because... but then also but like the weird thing is like after i don't want to get to note yet but i feel like it's kind of into no, the part yeah so when the note comes out it's obvious that a lot of the information had to come from angelina due to the fact well that... well not all of it came from Angelina, actually. No, but I'm just saying, like, she was there. Sam knew that she knew stuff and wasn't told. Yeah, for sure. And then after the note, Sam goes, well, I feel like I'm closest with you. To Angel, Just ignoring the fact that she didn't say anything to you. I know. Like, I mean, that, I, I, that was I, the I, weird thing with Sam was that she was very easily able to put blame on these people. And I think she was just trying to focus her anger because now she knew like she was yeah. able to be ignorant before. And now that they told her that's who she decided she was going to focus. So let's do the same thing now. Yeah, um, it's, I feel like it's just all meshed into one. Yeah. So Sam is the co winner for the least likable person in the house for me for this season. Yeah. Uh, actually, Ronnie and Sam are the two co winners for me. First half uh, of the yeah. season is Ronnie. First half of the season is by far Ronnie. I think, for me, like, I'm not someone who is a fan of the whole cheating culture thing, which has become really popular in the past 10 years, which is really weird. Like, there's even comedy about it now, <laughs> where, like, these trash ass, and I'll, I'll be honest, I find them trash, Vine and Instagram comedians that do the whole cheating comedy, where it's, like, normalized for all guys to cheat or whatever. I think it's whack. Um... And him to go back, even as a teenager, I realized, like, going back into your 
girlfriend's bed after you like dog her out for like five hours so scary. and you make her cry that's so mean that's yeah. like really mean behavior and i understand maybe he was a uh, being a dumb guy in his 20s but that, you're still mean but that know? doesn't make it okay no, i'm in doesn't. my 20s and if i did something dumb no one would be like oh well you're just being a dumb guy in your 20s no and i think i think it's easier to use that excuse for him because he's on a reality tv show so saying he's a dumb guy in his 20s is like oh yeah well yeah he's on a reality tv show it makes sense um yeah. but that's just it's so skeezy so skeezy exactly. that you could do that to someone that you could tell he has feelings for her. i don't think that that's not there no right um but it's just so crazy to see how when he gets angry he could do that to someone that he loves yeah imagine if time. he didn't like you well we'll see that later on in the series um but we'll get to that in like season four yeah so he's he's dogging her out every night and that's the reason why he's my my first half of the season least likable sam she's begging if you know it's like jay Watt says if you know something tell me if you know something tell me if you know something tell me and then a note gets written to her she gets all this information about ronnie but instead of focusing on that the fact that she is kissing this guy on the mouth after he hooks up with multiple women at clubs prior to getting into bed with her 10 minutes later she then puts all this mental anguish and emotional anguish and puts it all on, well, who wrote the note? As if that's important. Yeah. Who cares? You found, Mike even said it. You, if you go back with this kid, you look horrible. And Mike is the person who, who stirs the pot the most, but he's speaking facts in yeah. that moment. It's, it's so sad to see. Um, and foreshadowing to her not wanting to be on family reunion. Yeah, I think really it's because it. of how bad she looks. Like, I think it's that post breakup clarity type of thing. Like when you're in a relationship, and which they kind of were in that on off for the all six seasons. Yeah, um, they were. Then when she got out of it and was in a new life, new relationship, stepped away and was able to look back on it, she probably looked back at Jersey Shore and says, "I look like a complete idiot this whole entire time." Yeah. Um. In the times she couldn't see it, right? You're cloudy. You're like, oh, I love this person. I I want to, like, I feel like there's a mindset of when you're in a relationship. For some people, you're like, I want to. I'm willing to work to make this relationship work. Like, yeah. rela relationships take work. I'm willing to put in that work, and this is just part of that work. Um, and that's probably her idea during that time. But when she steps back and she's just like, like, I can't believe. I let him let, let a guy do this to me. It's on camera. I knew it. And I didn't do anything about it. And then she's fighting the people who tried to help her out in that situation. Yeah. I mean, no, I don't know it, if I could come back to it either. No. And you know what? I mean, we're not in season three yet, but obviously they all become friends again. They reconcile. Yeah. I'm going to be hundred percent honest with you. If let's say you, were mm. the same in the situation and i wrote you a note saying it now granted yeah. i'll just tell you to your face because screw the partner who's cheating on you that, that's a bad person right there yeah but if you fist fight fought me because i gave you information i'd be done for life yeah we would not be able to reconcile with that no. that's it because you you you, you, you prove in that moment that you are blind to recognize friendship mm -hmm. and distinguish that from relationships uh, and I mean, we're, we're not a pod that's like going to psychoanalyze people or, um, get into like the drama of a situation, but this is an intract integral storyline to this season yeah. that lasts throughout the entire show. Well, that's a crazy thing that that's a note I had. They fight from episode one. Um, I made a note that in episode one, Angelina sits next to Ronnie in the hot tub just they're oh, in a hot yeah. tub and sammy gets pissed off about it like so from episode one when they weren't together they weren't together at that point episode one she gets mad because she thinks angelina is coming on to ron when they're literally not doing anything just in a hot tub 
because she chose to sit next to him. And then she stays mad. All the way up until the very last episode when they're on their like last date. And she says, Ron, you're acting weird. And he was like, no, I'm not. And, and she's just she like, asks him, why are you even with me? Yeah. It's like, you're trying to sabotage it in a way almost. Or, and I wonder, like, I think back, I wonder how, if the producers had to feed anything during this. Um, Possibly. Or was this just all natural? Because like, how, how does your mind flip like that? Cause like Ron was Ron in like the post when it's like the single shot of him talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, you know, we we're having a good time laughing and whatnot. And then she tells me I'm acting weird. So now, yeah, I'm going to be acting weird. Like what? <laughs> I mean, we'll see throughout the show if, if this is peak, but I think this is peak unlikable Sam. Yeah. I it's think just it gets rough. easier I mean, for her from here. Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. Uh, peek behind the curtains i started season three right after uh watching wow. season two this morning first episode of season three it's like why are you on the show still mm-hmm. that that's how bad it is um but speaking of that i would we had the run and sam debate do you want to discuss anything else about them um nothing crazy i might okay. t- allude to it for other topics but yeah we can sprinkle throughout but speaking of, I don't know why you're on the show anymore. How'd you feel about Angelina returning? Um, It was weird. A little weird, right? In the sense of, I get they want to try to make it work for her again. She obviously, after the success of season one, she's like, oh, crap, I, this could be something. She had to be thinking it. Um, Let me try to get back in. Um, But, I mean, she set her up. She set herself up for failure after losing not even leaving in season one. I don't think that was the set of her failure. Her actions after. Um, yeah. From her talking uh, crap about the cast. Talking about Pice. Think, yeah. I think that really just, she burnt bridges in the house. And then when she came in, she didn't repair them the way she probably should have right in the beginning. If she nope. aired everything out in the beginning, fine. But which it, that's the cool thing about this cast is that Sunday nights, they get together. And they just fight. Mm-hmm. And they understand they're going to do that. But that's going to lead to them being good going forward. And they're good with, with reconciling with people. Yeah. You just got to admit that you're wrong. And you um, fight it out. And keep it moving. It's almost. And here I go. I mean, maybe I'll get, I'll get canceled again. Um, It's almost an Italian-esque thing where you're like loud family arguments, like screaming. But then mm-hmm. you know that's just a part of like your family therapy that you need to get through. Just to talk through your problems. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, because they they know that they're going to fight, but then if they have a conversation after that fight, that they they could get through it, almost. Yeah. And I like that, because they're all almost on the same page with that. And yeah, if you I'd have agree. a good conversation, you can make up. And it makes for good television. Yeah, because who doesn't love a good argument? And who doesn't love a good conversation reconcile after? Yeah. Um, and in regards to everyone else uh, coming into the show, yeah, you're just kind of like, I'm looking for more debauchery. Um, yeah. And that's pretty much it. And um, let's see. Do you want to get into one of the next topics? Yes. Um, I'm ready to move on from there because it was just, that was just, I feel like, an underlining role we needed to get out of the way. Yeah, because you, you do kind of have to go through all that. Yeah. Um, now, I'd like to discuss the funniest moments, but I should have told you about this beforehand. I kind of wanted to make this iconic slash funny moments from the mm-hmm. season. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think we can start off any better than with the note itself. Yeah. The note is, it might not be funny, but it's an iconic. It's kind of funny. Oh, uh, yeah. That's true. The way they have to write it, because they're like, um, at one point, they're like, we don't say breasts. We say, like, boobies or whatever. And they're like, that that will throw them off our scent. <laughs> so, I have the note right here. Can I read it out? Oh, please do. Sam, the first night at bed, when you left crying, Ron made out with two girls and put his head in between a cocktail waitress's breasts. Also, he was grinding with multiple fat women. When you left crying at Clutch, 
Ron was holding hands and dancing with a female and took down her number. Multiple people in the house know, therefore, you should know the truth. They should have reworded it. Do yeah. Everyone in the house knows. Just Bingo. to keep it, not multiple, because like multiple could just be them too. Yeah. So, spoiler alert, hopefully you watched this already, but Sam and Jenny wrote the note. So, Sam saying multiple. I mean, Jenny Sam yeah, I said Sam. What the yeah, hell? Yeah, then I said Sam after yeah. you because you messed um, me up. Jenny and Snooky wrote the note. So if you say multiple, then it could literally just mean you two. Yeah. So, like, maybe that got him in hot water. Maybe in Sam's head, that's what it – I mean, obviously the guys know. But I think you, Sam I think Sam knew that none of the guys would say anything until yeah. after it was aired. Yeah. Um, Here's the my note, thing, The note's so iconic – that they make shirts. Yeah, it's hilarious. It, it, the wording is so freaking funny. Because you know what would have been better than them writing that entire thing? You just write a note that says, Sam, Ron has been cheating on you and then getting into bed with you. Yeah. Bingo. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then Ron doesn't have clues based on the verbiage in the note. Yeah, it would have been super simple. But, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's Jenny and Nicole, so... You, you take what you can get, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was a pretty iconic moment. Uh, um, yeah, but, but then we also get a lot of the slogans this season. A lot of them, yes. A lot. Uh, t-shirt time finally becomes a thing. It's T-shirt time. Mm -hmm. uh, DTF becomes a thing. Yes. GTL gets the acronym. Originally, it was just called Jim Tan Laundry. Now yeah. it's GTL. Uh, you had the moment where they had two sets of girls in the house at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite moments from the season by far. You got, this isn't a funny moment, uh, but it's an iconic one. Uh, both fights with the with the women. Uh, yes. Sam versus Jenny and Snooki versus Angelina. Mm -hmm. Which fight was better, by the way? You're a fight guy. Um, Sam and Jenny. Okay. Which was kind of wild because Sam may have had the upper hand in it. Watch the uncensored version. It's wild. And I know that you probably have, but yeah. anyone who's listening and watching this, go watch the uncensored version. It's insane. Mm -hmm. The language that they use is woof. Um, yeah, you get MVP. MVP. Um, which is just, it's one of the greatest bromance. Like, the M3. Yeah. Big time. Like, such a great bromance. Yeah. Because it continues to this day. Yeah. Now it and probably the sure. healthiest. That's probably one of the healthiest friendships um, in the the house. Besides the, the girl. The show. Yeah. At the beginning of the show, yes. Besides, like, the girls, probably, like, Dina, uh, Snooki, and Jay Wan now. I yeah, assume. which comes later on. Yeah. Um, but at that time, healthiest friendships, kind of. We'll get there. Um, and uh, what other moments do you have? Um, funny moments. I liked the, when Mike was eating a sandwich while Paulie was having sex with a girl. <laughs> and he goes, you want um, to Yeah. It, it was just so wild that that's yeah. a thing that was able to happen. Um, there, I, we already said the, oh, the guys describing the, um, the, Wait, the guy's describing to the girls how Ron was acting in the club. Oh, oh they were sorry. telling, yeah, they were telling like Snooky and Jay Wow how he was acting, and mm -hmm. that had me dying because just like listening each guy kind of like say a little bit and using their words, it was better than the note because it's raw, and there was more elaboration. He was like, "I'm doing work, like you're doing work, son." Yeah, that was an excellent scene. Excellent scene. Um. I had this snippet. It was just like a quick snippet from the very first episode. Snooky mm. driving may be the best thing, which we'll see Ooh. in season four more. Yeah. Um, but watching her drive, she's one sitting up on the steering wheel, barely could see over it. And then she blames everyone else for their shitty driving. And then 10 seconds later says, I'm a bad driver. She's like yelling at people and then says, I'm a bad driver. <laughs> uh, another moment. Uncle Nino in the hot tub with the oh, girls. Oh, we get Uncle Nino this season. 
Oh, the sanitation. No, this is my Snookies and uh, my, 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 my J-Lo's. Yeah, so good. So good. Love Uncle um, Nino. Hope he's still doing all right. There's a cha- There's a part that made me laugh, which is, is this almost goes into our next topic probably of that's cringe. But when Mike tries to take Ramona and then he can't. Ugh. Because yeah, I thought I was it was kind of funny like, that she was just like, please. He was going for a third robbery on, on Vinny. A third Dude. one. Yeah. Um, um, also the hookup board when they were oh, trying to so figure funny. that had me giggling. So good. It's so genius. Oh, the yeah. IFF. Oh yes. I, oh my God. Excellent. Excellent. Their uh, acronyms are on like top notch. That's why last I'm episode perfect. of this podcast, we said their marketing. They, that's the, one of the, the greatest things was the cast had a great marketing minds. Yeah. Um, big time. Because they came up with these acronyms that just became huge. Like, if you watch the show, you have this acronym, and now you could use it. Like, in especially high schoolers, we were using all this crap. Yeah. <laughs> every single one. Seriously. Every mm-hmm. single one. Uh, and you know what? We can go right into the that's cringe moment of the series, or of the season. Yeah. Now, mine, I have a dead tie. Uh, do you want to give your... Uh, nominees first. Oh, I don't know if I have. All right, so I can go. No, oh, let me so, go through my. I'll read my list while you're you're talking about yours. So I have a tie, and I'll go chronologically with which two happened. One of the nights out with Paulie and Mike, mm-hmm. Angelina gets way too inebriated. Mm-hmm. Comes home, clearly blacked out oh, to i know what point, you're talking about to the point of like being in love with paulie which was weird mm-hmm. episode two this is by the way smacks him in the face three times five minutes later they're outside discussing it and angelina doesn't even remember what happened mm-hmm. five minutes prior she smacks his kid doesn't remember it happening at and all she's saying well no it was the blonde girl like from the club who she, she was dancing even, with or which something. Which means that she doesn't even know what this conversation's about. No. Um, uh, she's also discussing Polly being with someone who has who was either engaged or married. Meanwhile, her boyfriend in season one was <laughs> someone who was getting a divorce. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really messy and just kind of... It's really sad to see someone on their second chance kind of blow things up. Yeah. And she has two friends in the house who she sleeps in the same room with. And then kind of just messes it all up. Uh, And she continues to do so throughout the season. The second part of that one Mm -hmm. would be her letting Jose and herself sleep in Mike's bed while her friend sleeps in her bed. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, why wouldn't you let the girl sleep in Mike's bed? Yeah, you it, your boy. I don't think he yours. would have had a problem with that because the no, thing that Mike had a problem with it after that was that Angelina was being like a bitch to him, and then slept in his bed without asking. Like, yeah, it's just like, who are you that you're gonna be like this to me, and then being bring a go. dude into my bed? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's crazy. It's also cringe the way she treated Jose. Very cringe. Dude, Angelina and is a cringe god this season. Jose, if there was a cuckmaster general in this uh, Big simp. season, it's, Big it's him. Simp energy. Yeah. It, it's it's sad to see. Um, I wonder yeah, how he, he feels because he's not even a cast member. Um, and it's it's really sad because he's like got to be like six four, good looking mm-hmm. guy, pretty built, dresses not got money horribly for two thousand ten. Uh, well, buying decent, fossil watches. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I wonder how he felt watching it back. Second, that's cringe moment. Mike, throughout the last two episodes of the show, of the season, really seemingly maybe was going through withdrawals and was very upset and pissy with everyone. Mm -hmm. Overly aggressive. Slaps Snooki in the mouth at one point, which I found really odd. Yeah. Uh, That was just kind of like not enjoyable to watch at all. So those are my two winners because I can't decide between the two. two, They're both awful. Um. All right. No, I think those are the the top of the season. Those two moments. I have like a list of just moments that I made notes of. Um, one of the that's cringe was it was hard to watch. Was what we already mentioned the Ron climbing into bed. 
Um, yeah. Because that's just, that was just, I think it's just, that's hard to see. Like someone do that to someone. And it's dirty. Oh, so dirty. Um, Oh, Ron Sam, should have been practicing social distancing. The night, the other thing, without Sammy knowing, you know, she like she looked in Ron's phone book and found the number of that girl. Oh like, yeah. It was like, how dare you? And he was like, we weren't together. Like what? And it's just she has a she's like next tier for being able to start a problem. She's the Emperor Palpatine of Jersey Shore, dude. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. it's um, bad. Sam staying with Ron is a huge cringe moment. Just the fact yeah. that she stays with him. Now, given obviously it wasn't one moment because it, it lasted. Till... No, but there's a deciding moment where she yeah. decides to and that's cringe. The fact that she decides to stay with him is, is so cringy to see because it's like mentally what's, what's the matter? What's yeah. like, which is sad. Um, Oh, Angelina stays with Jose in the smush room, which he has to know that that's the smush room. Like he hangs he out with not. the squad enough. No, he has to know. He has to. There's no way he doesn't. Um, Maybe he does. And because I think they were making the bed and they were like joking around about how like dirty it is. So they need to make sure they have a clean sheet or something. And so you know, in his mind, he's like, "I'm getting some finally," and never got some. The, oh, the which show. then he's in that bed. Actually, there's he's in the bed and he's like trying to like initiate, and she's like, "Just give me a moment, just give me a moment," and she already knows that he's not getting any. You you, you hate to see it with Jose, you really do. Yeah, it's just so it's so sad. Like I don't know. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, but during that whole Mike tirade at the end, um, when he doesn't get any girls, how he threw that hissy fit, like that's yeah. what it was. He got he threw a hissy fit, and then after that, him n like not being a wingman one bit for Polly. Like, dude, they the have girls teammate. twice. It's twice, and the way the way he talks to these girls are so demeaning. Like, ugh, if that happened now, um, d yeah. It wouldn't. I don't, that's the thing. Like, I don't know if the show could come out now. I don't know. Um, I have some quotes in here where, yeah, you think that it would go pretty sour for Mike, especially. Oh, I have some quotes from everybody in here that it could go pretty sour. And you know what? With that being said, let's move on to the quotes. Yes, let's do it. The first quote I wanted to read directly. Um, this is Mike to Angelina. Mm hmm. Clean the house, you dirty mess. <laughs> Angelina then says, say please, say please. And then Mike goes, please hit the effing treadmill. You know what? Don't even hit the treadmill. Hit the elliptical. It's better for you. Really that's, rough. That's hilarious. Really rough. That that age is pretty bad. It, it really does. Um, then you have another age pretty poorly <laughs> line. Mike uh, in a single interview shot. Ronnie's at the club hooking up with grenades. That is a bigger ugly chick and also landmines, which is a thin ugly chick and um, love and life. I have that quote up here too. Incredible. Quote. It's, just, that, it's Here's the thing though. While it's uh, awful, it's an awful thing to say. Yeah. Mike is such a funny individual naturally that you can't help but laugh when he's saying it. Oh yeah. It's, it's not, it's, it's weird because he just, he almost has like a stand up comedian's presence about him where like the way he delivers it is hilarious. Deliveries on point. Even yeah. his, um, when they're in the jacuzzi with a bunch of girls and he goes, and I finally, I get some water in my face and I'm like, oh, we got grenades, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so, oh, the chicken cutlet. We forgot to talk about the chicken oh, cutlet the in chicken, the iconic moments. Which that, the iconic moment and how cringe for whichever girl it came from. Yeah, so there was one girl that they kind of focused on a little more and her face was just like, like blank. Uh, um, and it's so funny because I know what those are now as a guy. And I like, I spent a lot of time with female friends and whatnot. Um, and I, it's, 
so weird to think that they have no idea what those things are. <laughs> like, I know about chicken, which my friends call them chicken cutlets. Because Maybe, of the show. Yeah, probably because of this. Like, and they the look like a chicken that, cutlet. The fact that they started throwing it around. is Was so funny. So they were, like, throwing it behind the back, like. <laughs> oh, but, my gosh. It was weird because some of the other girls were also making fun of it. So was yeah, it just not popular were, back then or something? Either that or they were drunk and on television yeah. and were like, not me. I'm not taking the blame for this. Yeah. Uh, what are some of your quotes? Um, there was a quote early on where Snooki, I don't remember what she was watching, but she said, I feel like a pilgrim, like, like from the fucking 20s out here. Oh, it was uh, episode one when Jenny knocks the juice onto the Ron Ron juice oh, onto onto Sammy. yeah Sammy's stuff, but it's just, it just I that made me giggle like really hard because Pilgrim twenties Snooky come on, uh another Snooky line. Guys are d bags and I hate them all. They don't know how to deal with women and that's why I think the lesbian rate is going up in this country. Um, I have a Angelina line of when Angelina is um. They're this is when everyone's like kind of mad at her, kind of, but mm -hmm. they're just in the cab one time. All the girls and the girls are talking about like guys, and she goes, Oh, you're talking about guys right now? Yeah, that's why everyone's been a bitch to me ever since I left. And it's complete like complete lack of self awareness. That sentence, just like reading it, it's just like, How did you flip it? Like, yeah, complete in your head, how did you make this conversation about you? Um, Sammy. This one, this is a cancel line. Um, the girls go to a like a sex shop, and Sammy goes, "We went to a tranny shop, you know, because they sold clothes trannies would wear." Oh gosh, now that's that's that might have been the worst age line. Uh, yeah, of the show. Oh, I heard that, a... and I went, ah! "Yeah, you forget, and you forget the." trans person moment with mike in the club oh yeah those have aged pretty poorly now but and they, to be they fair, came up with a saying i don't remember i didn't write that down but they're like if you have a question like if you got to question it it probably is yeah they're, they're like in miami if you got to question it, it probably is so um <laughs> back in the early 2010s and prior to that trans folks weren't as in the weren't as well discussed but nowadays Especially, we have reality yeah, television culture. shows based mm -hmm. on trans uh people i now have trans friends but back then you don't know it at all yeah and they just spoke the way that they spoke and we're gonna leave it at that mm -hmm. um i have another one from snooki <laughs> I don't, this is uh, before they even get down there in Miami. I don't go tanning anymore because Obama put a 10% tax on hmm. tanning. I feel like he did that intentionally for us. Like McCain would never put a 10% tax on tanning because he's pale and would probably want to be tanned. Yeah, Brilliant. that was that was beautiful. Cause it, and, and then it also brings you back to what time this was. Ages it a lot. Yeah. John McCain was running for president. Um, Jay Wow, this is one of my favorite lines that I still um quote to this day. Uh, you could stay here and get your ass beat. You could stay here and get your ass beat. Get your ass beat. Get your ass beat. Get your ass beat. You love Five it. Alive. Oh, Five alive. God, it feel uh that line. So good. Oh, um, also shut your mouth, you dirty little hamster. Yes. Um, Pauly D, we're promoting a great free, um, a grenade free America. Um, and then Vinny, one of my favorite Vinny lines ever. Uh, he's fighting with Ooh, Angelina. So he, how did and I she's write that like, down? She says something like, uh, obviously she refer, referenced herself as Kim Kardashian of Staten no, said, Island. She, yeah, she was like, I know I'm the best right now. Yeah, and he goes, more like the Rob Kardashian of Staten Island, you ugly bitch. <laughs> and like, the, the Rob Kardashian emphasis in it, and then the ugly bitch emphasis, you could tell he was putting it all in there. That was his do kill you, shot. Do you think that was a pre-prepared pre line like he had set? Um, or do you think that was off the cup? I think it was off the cup. I, I think maybe he, they, he may have made the analogy in his head a little bit. I don't know. 
Maybe it wasn't. If, if he came up with that on the spot, bravo. Yeah. Well, I mean, he is the smartest impressed. person in the house. Yeah. Yeah, he is. So, <laughs> most educated, at least. But he's not the funniest. No. Uh, and for him to just come out with that, incredible. Yeah. Do uh, you have anything else for the quotes? That's all the quotes I have. And um, would you like to get into the MVP discussion? Yes. As in the MVP of the show? Yeah. So, John, last season, we both had Mike, Mike. as the MVP. Yeah. I'll let you know this right now. He is not my MVP this season. Me either. And it's it's because he just became a dick. Is Second this... half of the season was really rough for Mike. Yeah. Yeah, he... First half, yeah. he's still just as funny. Mm-hmm. But once there started being less drama in the house, he it kind really Actually, post-Angelina leaving, really, is when yeah. he got bad. Mm-hmm. So It's like someone needed to fill the role of stirring the pot, and he was it. I'll say this, though. You put... You, you end it when Angelina leaves, he might have been my MVP of the season. Yeah. But that last two episodes again he won that's cringe for me mm-hmm. so you disqualify you are excluded from the mvp conversation you're excluded so john who are your candidates or possible winner of the mvp award for season two of jersey shore um paulie d i think he he's there up there um and maybe Oh, maybe Snooky this season. Interesting. Interesting. So, for me, mm-hmm. it's Polly. Yeah. By far the most entertaining person. I think in the he's house. my number one. I if I had to like have like put on a competition for two, it would be him and Snooky. Um, but I he for sure he's number one. Um, you have. Multiple hilarious moments where he asked Angelina, "Pardon my French." He asked her if she got her, if she got finger popped in the club. <laughs> <laughs> you have him fighting for the first time ever on the show, mm-hmm. twice bookending the season, uh, once with Jenny slash Snooki and once with Angelina at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Really yelling for the first time. Which, and you- he's the most entertaining yeller. Yeah, it, like he-, beca- he became a meme. Yeah. I don't the, the this face thing, yeah, yeah, big time. Was he one of the first memes? I was about to ask you that. I think he might have been. Holy crap! Because it was a... Jersey oh Shore God. matters, John. It matters, dude. Crazy. Uh, yeah, you have him giving all the sayings out, which everyone starts repeating on the show slash in real life. Mm-hmm. I think this is the Paul D season. He finds a girl that he he goes on dates with. Yeah. Um, he's you know. He pokes fun at himself, but everyone else around him as well. Mm. He is, in my opinion, the star of season two. Yeah, a hundred percent. I wanted to be like the most in season two. I was like, this guy's awesome. He's so funny. He he gets all these girls, man. You know, mm. he's, he's got the cool tattoos. He's got a star on his elbow. Young Kyle was loving Pauly D. Uh, <laughs> he's got a star on his elbow. He got cool sneakers. Uh, and yeah, I just uh, I'm a big fan of Pauly D in season two and all throughout the show in general. Mm-hmm. He's less douchey this season than he is in season one, which is odd. Yeah. Because uh, oh, and to be fair, in season one, he's talking actively about how he doesn't care if he breaks up Jenny and Tom. Well, I think in this season he has um I don't remember her name. Rosita. Rosita, and that makes him seem like more normal of a nicer guy. Yeah, not like douchey. It's more relatable because you could tell he likes her. Um, he like is like he he's different with her than he he is when he's with the house and you were able to see that a little bit can we discuss the vinnie and ramona stuff yes it was sad vinnie simping hard yeah and it's weird because you're on this tv show and girls are coming you and i have been out Mm -hmm. girls do not usually come up to random guys like that Mm -mm. these guys have women coming up to them all the time but you see the one that doesn't come up to him, he feels like he has to chase endlessly to the yeah. point where it's a little sad. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy that like when he gets stood up and he just continues to call her. Yeah. And 
like then he calls he her and convinces yeah the, the 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 convincing the begging and it's just sad but then it kind of worked out for him but even at the very end when they're like saying goodbye and you could tell he's more sad than she is yeah like it was it was sad to see that like he was like heartbroken like damn I don't know if like we're ever gonna like this is ever gonna work out like I would love to like try to continue things like he goes have you ever had a, like a long distance relationship and I don't think she was thinking of this like a relationship she's like yeah Vinny's in town like I'm gonna hang out with him for a little while and then when he leaves it's probably over and um, she got some free clout out of it and she's yeah. a dancer so maybe she's like oh I mean, this might lead to my career being further or whatever mm-hmm. which they didn't show her dancing one little bit no no, no. Like smart, don't. Um, she no free cloud dancing. over here. She didn't get any dancing cloud out of that at all. But yeah, <laughs> that was he. He was super simpy in that moment. Still doesn't beat Jose, but still super simpy. No, not even close. Um, uh, but yeah, that was rough. Rough to see. Yeah. So we've now seen both seasons. Mm-hmm. Your favorite is season one. My favorite is season two. Yes. Now. Let me say, they're very close in my mind. I think they almost go hand in hand. By far, the best seasons, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah now, not saying, very early. not saying that the other ones aren't highly, highly entertaining. There's really only one bad season. And it's the um, last one. Yeah. But I don't even know if it's fully bad. No, I just it's think still entertaining. It's, it's just more normal. Like they're yeah. not as crazy, um, but I don't even think it's that's still better than a lot of reality TV. Like, yeah. I would rather watch that season over and over again than have to watch The Bachelor or Bachelorette. Like, I agree. It's just it's still be- some of the best reality TV, and that's what's amazing. There are worse yeah. seasons better than your best season. Big time. Yeah, no, th- I um, mean, season two really shows you the things that kind of permeated pop culture. Yeah. Uh, and, like, establishes these this cast of people as icons. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Angelina leaves, and we didn't discuss this at all, and I kind of want to get into this a little bit. Angelina leaves before the final week of filming. Which is crazy. And you have to wonder, do you think she regrets that as, like, the biggest mistake of her life? Because I told you this. It had to be. She went back to working a normal job after the show. Yeah. She was an EMT up until family vacation started. And when you think about it, most of them didn't. Now, given most of them started business opportunities based off the show, so that was their job. Um, But... Most of them didn't work real jobs. I think Vinny went back to school. I think Vinny finished schooling or something. Or he got he his did? trainer's degree or like mm-hmm. to be like a well, physical no, trainer. So, so I think he was a trainer before the show started. Oh. I think that's what he went to school for. Interesting. It's just like he took his own fitness very seriously post show, which yeah. is interesting. But. I mean, it makes sense. Um, kind of cleaning up his life in general. <laughs> yeah, after six uh, like, years of you're, du- you're like, I did this. Yeah, I did these six seasons of partying my life like i need to I grow up almost yeah um which is funny coming from like the mama's boy and stuff you know yeah um but yeah i don't i'm i forgot what we we're talking about to be honest angelina angelina yeah she had to make a huge because like i said to you she became an emt can you imagine um you watch jersey shore right you live in maybe by where she's an EMT. All of a sudden, you slip, fall, break your leg. You need an ambulance to come. And Angelina's your EMT on site. And you're just, you you have to hold in laughter slash fear because you know this is the hamster. Um, Like, I, I mean, how do you live a normal life after being on this show? Also, with how dirty they made her seem with the, um, the dirty pad incident. Yeah. The no cleaning dishes. Mm-hmm. To then become a healthcare worker can't, couldn't have been easy. No. How do you think she got a job? Like, maybe who she interviewed just her and said yes? New people. Yeah, maybe. Family in it. I don't know. Well, Nepotism. she was a dental hygienist or who something knows? originally. But um, 
yeah, originally I think... she was a bartender. She was doing things. Doing big things. Do you wish that she would have stuck it out and stayed on the show? Um, no. Um, and I say no because they fill her spot. Eventually. Spoiler alert, yeah, we get yes. um, a new person in season three. Yes. I personally agree. I think the cast is perfect from season three on. Mm-hmm. And for you, at the time, what do you think you remembered most about season two? And now looking at it through adult eyes, what's your biggest realization about season two? Um, how dysfunctional all of them are. Yeah. Um, that's mostly it. Like anything really set them off. They fight about the smallest things. Um, now given you're living with people that you have a lot of people in that house. And you're living with them. There's a lot of alcohol involved. So it's understandable that you're getting into these arguments. Well, a lot of arguments. Um, but that's my adult takeaway. My young takeaway was how much fun they seem to have. Yeah. Um, these taglines. Um, but notice in neither of those, I don't think Angelina was a pivotal part. Except for... Her stirring the pot. Um, I don't think she's a big takeaway from this season. Well, no, she just sat around eating cereal at the phone all day. Yeah, like it. It was. She just like so for her like going back to the original of would I like to see her stick it out? No, because then she would have been in season three probably. And I don't think I don't. I feel like moving on. Um, we don't need her stirring pot anymore. They became more of a family without her. Almost. Well, it's interesting because season two is almost the um, the Empire Strikes Back of the Jersey Shore seasons. Yeah. Because you have this big divide between amongst the girls and Sammy. Uh, Ron and the girls kind of seem to be in a bad, a bad place as well. At one point, Ron pushes Vinny because of Sammy. Mm-hmm during the first fight and the family's kind of separated at the end of the show. And you see remnants of that in the beginning of season three. And it, it really is long-term storytelling Yeah, in the show. And I'm not going to spoil anything for, for next week's pod, but the, the drama somehow only picks up post season two. Mm-hmm. I think seasons one and two are the most fun. And then, especially with Ron and Sam, what happens with them going forward really gets into some dark territory where, like, it, they're just starting, starting to try to hurt each other. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I think it really set the precedent for, like, what not to do in a relationship for, for a young Kyle. And as an adult, Kyle, it's weird seeing these people that I know I'm the same age that they were back then and seeing stuff where I'm just like, I don't, I don't see how someone with my life experience would act that way, especially on camera. Yeah. Uh, Mentally, they're childish. I'm referring to season two. I'm referring to season two, by the way, not anything after that. Mm -hmm. It really, it really goes to show again that this group of people was they were all pretty much born to be on reality television. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, with the addition of who they get in season three, which we'll touch on next week, it really is, again, I think the the best cast ever assembled on reality television. Yeah, that casting director. Actually, you know what? I'm going to look it up. Give me one second. Yeah, we need to give this person props if we can find it. Um, But I agree. And I'm actually really excited to... uh, because we said these first two seasons are our favorite. I'm excited to watch the rest okay. because I remember key moments here and there, but I'm excited to see the relationships develop now throughout. Cause that's not what I remember from my first viewing. Me, me neither. So I'm so excited to rewatch. And, um, as you said, you, you watched season, uh, season three, episode one. And like, I don't remember Sam, Sammy getting worse. Um, she's worse. 
So I'm, I'm excited to see that. Like, I, there's so many small things you don't remember that I'm excited to see, and I'm excited to see through a lens now. So, um, like, if you're watching this and you hear us say, um, like, these were the two best episodes, don't get discouraged from watching the rest. Because no, it's still, it's, just, it's, that it's good. still, That's yeah, saying. that, um, it's still amazing television for what it is. Obviously, it's not, it's not the hunters or hunters. It's not, you know, like, it's kind of like, like that. But let's look at it through Marvel movie lens. Yeah, from two thousand eight to two thousand, uh, when was when was um uh, Infinity War? What was that twenty eighteen? Yeah. So in a ten year span. Because it was, yeah, 10 years. I would argue the, or well, let's say nine years span before Infinity War. Mm -hmm. I would argue the two best movies in that movie uh, verse mm -hmm. came out in 2012 and 2014 or 2015. Yeah. That's pretty early on, but I still watched every movie after that because they're still all good, mm -hmm. but the two early on were just that good. Well, then it's also saying something like the fact that you have movies that are like, um, what's one of your favorite movies? Uh, Pulp Fiction. No, no, I mean out of that series. Sorry. Oh, out of that series, uh, I would argue. Um, Captain like from America, a Winter film Soldier. standpoint, right? Captain uh, Captain America: Winter Soldier. Right. So you have Winter Soldier, and then you have Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Like they're two different types of movies, but they all serve that pivotal story arc. Yeah. Um, and that's the same thing with the rest of these seasons. These are people that you're going to watch grow on camera because they're going through such a strange part of their life in, in such a strange way. And you get to see them build a little bit, build a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm so excited to watch it as an adult. Now, who's that casting director? So uh, the casting director is Doran Afir. Mm -hmm. uh, it's this guy. He's wearing Shout a out him. hat. And also he worked with the executive producer, Sally Ann Solsano. Mm -hmm. uh, who actually previously worked on A Shot at Love with wow. Tequila Tequila. Nice. Man. So, yeah, shout out to them for finding the best group of people possible for this show. Yeah, amazing. And I think that about, if you, have, if you don't have anything else to say, that might wrap it up for this episode. That's all I got. All righty. Uh, John, where can the people find you? As always, y'all can find me on Mixer.com forward slash Ginger Gorilla. Watch my streams. Um... I'm going to be finishing up my Red Dead Let's Play this week, oh. which you can find that whole series on YouTube, Ginger Grill Gaming. Um, and then I'm very excited to replay The Last of Us. Um, that's going to ah, be my next Let's Play. And I'm going to be doing that before The Last of Us 2 comes out, which is a game on my stream and on YouTube. I'm going to um, stop my life, basically. <laughs> to play that game as quick as possible and get that content out as quick as, po quick as possible, which is going to be weird because those videos I'm going to release literally as many and as quick as possible, not like one a day. And oh, okay. so that that story is out there, so on and so forth. I'm very excited about that, though. I'm excited for that other playthrough. Obviously, we got Fortnite content. Fortnite's back. Um, that's a little geeks, uh, Gorilla and the Geek right there. Fortnite's back. Me and Kyle time. could agree on. It's been so Big much time. fun again. I think it makes the streams even more fun because we're having so much fun while playing. Um, check out my Twitter, Ginger Gorilla Gaming, and Instagram, Ginger Gorilla. There's clips every day. Um, so check that out. It tells you when I'm live, all that good stuff. And Kyle, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Buff Charmander. You can find me on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app, Geeks weekly that's the name of the channel or the podcast feed uh make sure to check back in with us next week for our season three review mm -hmm. i have a feeling after watching this first episode that it is still going to be a banger just maybe with a little bit more discussion on toxic relationships um and make sure to check out to so this video will be coming out the day after so check out our most recent review of the last dance documentary which is on my channel slash podcast feed. Mm -hmm. uh, that's coming up uh, to an end next week. So only two more episodes left. Come along. And if you haven't watched us. that documentary, 
and you just like greatness in general, make sure you watch it. It's it's amazing. Cause um I'm not a fan, but of basketball in general necessarily. I'm not a huge fan. Like I don't hate it, but um, and this docu series is truly amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, and that'll do it for us here on this episode of Grill and the Geek. Thank you all very much for watching and or listening. If you're on the YouTube, leave the video a like and subscribe to John's channel for sure. He's growing, he's grinding, he's putting in the work. Very proud of him. And yeah, that'll do it for us here on this week. Uh, Oh, in the comment section down below, by the way, let us know your thoughts on season two and also what your favorite season of Jersey Shore is. If it's Mm -hmm. one of these two, let us know your opinion between the two. Yeah. And if you have any questions, anything you want us to discuss. And once again, this isn't what this podcast is now. It's just quarantine. Quarantine content, baby. Something to do, brother. Yeah. Uh, Again, I'm wrapping this up for like the fourth time now. Thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you again next time. Peace out, everybody.